Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings once more to our viewers at home. Welcome to our devotion. My name is Otto Matsapula. We'll be looking at John the Baptist. That's where we will focus on. Um, you'll realize that we are focusing um, on some of the Bible characters. What type of people they were, the personality, the character, the decisions they made. So that we can choose to do what is good from their personalities or characters. So that we can learn their mistakes and do that which is right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your weight. We pray that you may give us a correct understanding through the Holy Spirit. That we may make right decisions. In the, in the name of your son we pray. Amen. Um, we look at John the Baptist. Um, the, the name of John means that uh, Jehovah is gracious. Um, John, as we know, it was a forerunner of Jesus Christ. John was the son of Zachariah, who was a priest, um, and his mother was Elizabeth. In Luke chapter 1, we see God sending Gabriel to tell um, Zachariah that he would have a son. Now, one of the most amazing things about um, John and Jesus Christ is that their names um, are given to the parents by angels. Uh, the same Gabriel visited um, Mary and Joseph, the, the parents of Jesus Christ, to tell them that you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. So Gabriel tells Zechariah, that the, 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 the son should be named John, which means Yahweh is gracious. Um, and, and, and John, it was also specified that he was to be a Nazarite. Um, and John was filled, if you read Luke chapter 1, John was filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb, something which is amazing. And, and he was a man who would live and preach with spirit and power of Elijah. He was a man who was not fearless. He was a man, when you were doing something wrong, he would tell you this is wrong. He, he was not afraid to call sin by its right name. He was a cousin of Jesus Christ. Um, he was six months older than um, um, Jesus Christ. He is a man who spent most of his time preaching in the wilderness. He was a man whose dress code was simple. His diet was simple. He spoke the cutting truth. Um, people left the cities, wherever they were, to come and, and listen to John and, and, and to be baptized of John for the forgiveness of sin. That's another thing that I want us to be aware of. The baptism of John was the one unto repentance. That is why in the book of Matthew, he says, there is one who comes after me, you know, whose shoelaces I'm not even worthy to touch. That man will baptize you with water and the spirit. Um, so his baptism was for repentance. And when Christ now started his ministry, uh, people were baptized, not only immersed under water, but they received also the Holy Spirit. Now, in John chapter 1, verse 29, we, we see John, when he sees his cousin coming for the first time, I, I would like to believe they were meeting for the first time, apart when their mothers met and, and, and there was joy, you know, um, in the womb when, when the mothers met. John felt something, you know. Um, apart from that moment, I think this was the first time uh, Christ comes to John, especially in Matthew chapter 3, to be baptized by Jesus Christ. A and John says, actually, you should baptize me, not the other way around. Christ says, Allow it for now to fulfill all righteousness. As I said, John's baptism was for the forgiveness of sins. 
Jesus Christ did not need any forgiveness because he had not sinned. But he was giving us a righteous example to follow that without being born again, one will not see and enter the kingdom of heaven. So the first birth is not sufficient. One needs a second birth. So Christ made that example for us that we need to follow. The same baptism that he went through is the same baptism that you and I must go through. We should not be sprinkled by water. We should not move under fire or any other thing. We should be immersed inside the water as a symbol of the death of Jesus Christ and then come up out of the water as a symbol of the resurrection of the new man. When you go under the water, you are bearing the old man with his sins. When you resurrect, it's a new man now. You live the life of Christ. That is why John says, um, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. You know, in the life that I live, I live by the grace of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Um, so in John 1, 29, he says to people who were there, the disciples were there, he had disciples. He says, behold the Son of God, which takes away, behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. And his disciples started following um, Jesus Christ. There's something I love about John. Let's go to chapter 3. Um, his disciples go, they see where he stays, you know. They, they follow him, they see the miracles that he performs. Um, in John chapter 3, we'll read verse 26, 27, and 30. Verse 26 of John chapter 3 says, And they came unto John, said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, uh, behold, the same baptizes, and men come to him. Um, I don't know what they were planning to achieve with this. Whether it was just information, or maybe they were jealousy that the followers are now living, I don't know. But they are telling John what is happening. And in verse 27, John answers them, and he says to them, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. So John is acknowledging that there is something that this man has received from heaven. That is why people are following him. And then when you read verse 30, John says, He must increase, but as for me, I must decrease. It means that he has seen that he is now reaching the end of his ministry. Because the man to whom he was preaching about, remember he was a forerunner, telling people that the Christ is coming, the Messiah is coming. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That man was now here. It's the same with us. We are preaching the gospel right now, telling people to repent for the second coming of Jesus Christ is coming. But when Christ has come, the preaching would come to an end. Actually, even way before that, when probation closes, when men can no longer repent, when Jesus has left the most holy place and is no longer listening to the prayers of the saints, then the preaching would be in vain. Those who would be praying, their prayers will not be heard, because, or rather be answered, because the ministry of Christ has been finished. So you do not continue preaching that Christ is coming when he has already come. So John Christ was already there, and he realized that, you know what, this man must increase, but as for me, I must decrease. It's something that we need to learn as people, especially those who love power and money. You know, we have people in our congregation who think that they can occupy a certain position forever until kingdom come. That is wrong. That will never happen. You, you, you sometimes hear even political party leaders saying they will rule until Jesus comes because they do not see themselves decreasing and others increasing. Nebuchadnezzar said the same thing. Jesus sending Gabriel gave um, the interpretation of the dream to Daniel. And Daniel said, after you, Nebuchadnezzar, will come another kingdom inferior to you. 
Nebuchadnezzar did not receive those news in a good manner. So he desired, you know what, I will rule forever. I will make the same statue that I dreamt about of pure gold. We have people in church. We have people in parliament. We have people who love power. They don't want to give it to other people. That is why they don't even train others to come up, to take up the baton and run with it. They think they will rule forever until they go to the grave. But John said, he must increase. I must decrease. You know, we need to be very careful when we are working in the kingdom of Jesus. Because he, the, the Bible says he removes kings and he sets up kings. It is him who does this. So today he has given you a certain position. Accept it, make use of it, and work for Jesus. But when the, ta- the turn comes for you to give up the space for someone else, allow it to happen like John did. He was someone who was very humble. We can learn something from John. We need to be humble under the mighty hand of God. Unfortunately, because of his preaching, John was imprisoned. As I mentioned, he was speaking the truth um, and he went to jail. And unfortunately, that's where he died. Uh, His head was removed because he told Herod that what he is doing is wrong. Herod left his wife and married the wife of his, his own brother, you know. And, and, and John told him, you are setting a wrong example. It's wrong for you to do such a thing. And because of that, he was thrown to jail. Um, in closing, we'll read Luke chapter 7. We'll go to Luke chapter 7, read from verse 24 to verse 28 about John. It says, When the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out in the wilderness to see? This is Christ. A reed shaken with the wind. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately, are in the king's courts. But what went he out for to see? A prophet, yes. I say unto you, as much more than a prophet. So John was far much more than a prophet. And and I remember Jesus Christ says that of all men that were born from women, John is the greatest. You know, so many prophets prophesied about Jesus Christ. Only John made a prophet that Christ is coming, repent, and is the one who did not only see Christ, but had an opportunity, a privilege of baptizing the very same Christ. So Christ says that John was greater than a prophet. He says in verse 28, among those that are born of women, there is no greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. So these are the words that we find in the Bible about John the Baptist. He was buried by his disciples after he was beheaded. And I pray that God may help us, that we may be like John, full of the Holy Spirit, preaching the truth without fear or favor, telling the people to repent, that the kingdom of God is at hand. And we too should be aligned to the same truths that we are preaching. And we should not compromise the truths because of who people are. And that we should always be humble. And that when God decides that our ministry in a certain place is done, we need to go somewhere else. We humbly accept that. This was John the Baptist. And If we follow what Jesus says and we mimic the examples of some of the good Bible characters that we find, then surely by God's grace, we will make it to heaven. On our own, we can't. We cannot preach the truth and the gospel on our own. We need Christ to accompany with us. And I love it because in Matthew chapter 28, he says, Lord, I am with you always. So may God help us that we may do his will while we are here on earth.
Let us pray together. Father, we thank you as we have studied about the character of John the Baptist. Help us, Father, to do the good things that he himself did, that we may be forerunners of Jesus Christ before he comes for the second time, that the whole world may be converted before Christ comes, and that we, together with those who are converted, may enter into your kingdom. Please be with us as we do your work. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.